Uh, name is Jason Needham, work with the risk management center. I was one of the first people in the door many, many years ago when it started, almost 15 years ago. Before that, I worked for HEC, um, helped develop FDA, FIA, um, but really when the safety programs in, really what I want to do, you, you've heard a lot about the cool tools we have, the research that supports those. I want to step back just a little bit and have a conversation about why we're doing what we do. Um, so, first of all, let's just start with, okay, let's say you're in the elevator out here, you have a fancy hotel, you jump in there with George Clooney, and you're like, hey, you're, good. you're the guy from, what, Facts of Life, right? So, there you go. And he says, cool, what do you do? How would you respond? What do you do? What else? What do you, what do, you do? Hopefully, as you've gone through a couple of these classes, most of you had the, the general consequences class, you're doing now the life sim class. If you want to start considering yourself a consequence specialist, a lot of people on our team, right? One way you'd start that is estimate the potential consequences for flooding to support investment decisions in our flood defense infrastructure. That's interesting, right? Um, so if their eyes don't blaze over and they start moving on to the next thing we talk about it, um, then they say, really cool. How do you do that? So right now, you're putting yourself in constant question. Choose for now. How do you do that? What's your answer? Statistics, modeling, both true. Can't just uh, spit out modeling because George Clooney is in your. Yeah, that's a bad close. Right, but like the data. All right, so <clears throat> one one way you could say this is we do groundbreaking research. An advanced software program that simulates how people get warned during emergency events. If and how quickly they take protective action and the flood moving through the area. Oh, and takes into consideration how people get warned, how quickly they take action, and the flood moving through the area. Uses all that information to predict how many people might die. Um, and it uses Monte Carlo, so it includes uncertainty, right? That's a long sentence, but that kind of summarizes this is how we do it. And most importantly, right, it's really, really cool. When you've seen the stuff that a tool like LifeSim can do and you start to understand what's going on, it's really pretty cool. Now, for this group though, right, that's fine. That's stuff you should be able to talk to other people about uh, how, how interesting your job is. What I want you guys to really think about, right? Sit through these classes, go to your work job every day. So what, what really matters a lot, right? So, why do you do it? Somebody already got to it in the first question. Spend the money where we want. All right, good. Spend the money on where it's most needed. So, where is money most needed? <laughs> it's getting back to the life stage, right? Our, our job is to show up every day and do the best we can to spend the limited funds we have to make people safer, right? If you can step back and think of that every day before you, when you wake up, so you're ready to go to work, it should be a little bit easier to roll out of bed and get inspired to go and do what you do, because that is important, all right? So that's what it comes down to. We can, and I believe we have, reduced the number of people that have lost their lives during flood events as we've started to focus more and more on life safety. Understanding what matters when it comes to getting warnings out to people, understanding what motivates them to take effective action, doing a better job of understanding where the water is going to go and whether people can survive that. Not only does that help for flooding, when you talk about that warning and evacuation process, that works for all sorts of habits, right? So we're helping improve that for any of the sponsors, communities downstream of our dams, we're helping them in many other ways. So 
those types of things can have a huge impact. And I really just want all of you to take a breath from all this cool detailed modeling and step back and remember why we're here, what we're doing, what we're doing, and the very significant impacts it can have on people in our country. Okay, a little bit more. <clears throat> when we, we started doing this a long time ago, HEC, RMC, we really, <laughs> those two groups have been very integrated when it comes to doing the research and developing these tools. Now, and they still are, you got obviously Nick, HEC, Woody and I, RMC, there's been a lot of back and forth. So it's an integrated team. Um, and so you go through those initial team building things. Hey, what's our vision? What's our mission? That's pretty, pretty straightforward here. Really, we're, we're focused on providing world-class innovation and support for consequence estimation. I think we've really achieved that. If you spend much time um, out in the world of dam and levee safety, and you start to see people that really understand how to think about consequences, um, people understand what we've been doing here uh, is really groundbreaking, and we're leading those efforts when it comes to understanding potential for lot logic. That's not because of me, it's because the Army Corps of Engineers has said, we're doing risk management, and risk management involves consequence management, and we need to invest in that part of the equation when it comes to understanding risk. So we have to really put a lot of resources into this specific research effort. But importantly for us all to remember, right, is why we do what we do. We have, we do a lot of stuff, right? We deliver clean water, power, affordable commerce, recreation, more recreation than Disney, and we do all these things, what's best for what's best for the tax, tax payers. Um, but there's nobody behind us. We have all these projects out there. More and more people are moving downstream of them, right? More and more people are moving in behind levees. It is on us to make sure that we maintain some level of safety for people behind. So this is how we look at the world of dam and levee safety often, right? Each one of these dots represents one of our projects. We make decisions on risk, therefore prioritizing which projects we invest in based on this two-dimensional chart often. Two dimensions. Each dimension is just as important as the other. As you go up and to the right, that's where you get to higher risk. That's where we prioritize our invested decision first. So on the y-axis, as you move up, the annual probability of breach increases. As you move to the right, the average life loss that breaches to occur increases, right? It's two dimensions. Anybody have any idea about how much we invest annually on our dam safety program? All part. Okay. About 500 million, right? So we're using this kind of information to justify about $500 million a year in investment. So, hopefully you understand why our agency looked at us and said, you know what, we're spending that much money, and one of the primary factors is life loss. You better be able to explain to me why your life loss estimates make sense, right? And that's what happened, right? We, we developed some methods, and then they started questioning, why does that make sense? That's why we spent all this money, right? If you think about how much has been spent on the, the consequence specialist developing life sim, right? It's significant, but it's a drop in the bucket compared to what those types of, that research and development has supported over the years. Anybody know what this is? Very good. Okay. Life step. Now, what's important about this tonight? I know Woody and this team has tried to ingrain this in your mind. It is a very cool tool. We're setting it up in such a way that really you can open it up, do a couple things, press a button, and get a result, which is great. But it's also a problem because 
we have only you to rely on when it comes to making sure what comes out of there makes sense. And this is the problem that all tool developers always have. We can make these cool tools, make them really easy to use. And the easier we make them to use, the less time people think about what's going on in there and the limitation of it, right? So using your brain, right? All those defaults, and you guys were talking about it, right? What's the distribution of high clearance versus low clearance vehicle? You don't have to think about it at all. If there's a default in there, D50, you can run it, great. You have to first think about, does that make sense, right? In some cases, that's fine. In some cases, it isn't, and it will have an impact on the result. So there are lots of things you can do, lots of, you, you have to understand what's going on in the tool to be able to make sure when you're reporting results, you can justify them and put them in context. And it's a continual struggle of, you could spend forever if you wanted to doing life loss analysis with life then, looking at every single one of the inputs, making sure it makes sense, right? So there's potential for doing sensitivity analysis to make sure, first of all, do I even need to worry about it? Does it matter? Second of all, understand the decision you're trying to inform. If you're trying to inform a decision of, hey, is life safety even an issue in this area? You don't need to worry about it a lot. If you're trying to inform a million dollar investment, you should probably uh, spend some more time. So in short, all we're really trying to do is this. It's pretty straightforward. How many people are going to be out there when the water shows up? How many of them are going to be in high hazards, meaning likely to get washed away? How many in low hazards? apply the appropriate fatality rates, and then let's talk about indirect life loss. Don't forget that life sim doesn't include indirect life loss. I know you all know that, but be able to talk about it, um, or at least be able to say, hey, there's another component here that we didn't address that could be significant. You all remember this if you took the consequences training, right? <laughs> I would highly encourage all of you, if you get a new project and it shows up just step back. Don't just open up life sim. Step back and say, well, here's my population centers. Here's how many people are there. Here's about how long it's going to take for water to get to those population centers. Knowing what I know from the research, I can come up with ranges of about how many people will still be there given that amount of time when the water shows up based on what we know from the evacuation research. And you can come up with really broad estimates of what you think the potential range of life loss is going to be. You can get your hydraulics mapped, just look at them, say, yeah, the depths are going to be really high, probably going to exceed our stability criteria, submersion criteria, or not. And you can start ballparking fatality rates. You can do all this just on your computer without live sim in about an hour it's just to get your mind thinking in the right frame of this is about what I should, should expect. Depth velocity. You have a real wide range there, but that, that's okay. You've identified the, the hot spots and you know why you're going to now run live sim to help you reduce that. And if you get results way outside of that, then there's obviously something wrong that you can start thinking. So don't just rely on the tool, rely on your brain, walk through it outside of life then before you get there. One other thing that we haven't focused on as much in this class, but we did in the consequences training was the cases. The importance of understanding the cases. Um, and I'll give you an example of why it was really important and something I had to do was um, we were asked to do a, a life loss estimate for a Mosul Dam in Iraq, right? The biggest dam in Iraq, what the potential life loss would be due to a failure of that because we we're really concerned about the situation about 10 years ago. And this is where understanding case histories really comes in handy, right? Because this is something really outside of our range of understanding of what could happen. Nothing like that has happened before. But let's talk through uh, what happened in Banqiao Dam in China in the 70s. Um, at about 26,000 direct life loss. 
that's a high number. Uh, an additional 200,000 due to what we would call indirect life loss. So let's focus on the direct now because that's what we're doing for, for life sim, the direct life loss. So having that understanding of case histories, and this is that image that I said you wouldn't be able to read. Can't read on the computer either. Sorry about that. But really it's saying we went through the assessment for Mosul Dam and did a lot of uncertainty, but we came up with an assessment being around 380,000, I think, for direct life loss uh, for Mosul Dam. So we spit that out and the senior leadership involved Rightfully said, so said what? That we've never seen anything like that. That's worse than um, bombs going up at right date. All these reasons why that didn't make any sense at first flush to that. Great. So now it's on us to say, well, here's why it makes sense. And the easiest way to do that is be able to call back to other really large scale events that have led to a lot of life loss um, from cases. So that's what we did. Pulled up Yankee Eye Dam. Population within six hour run time, 50,000. Or XYZ Mobile Dam had 50,000. So let's just focus on those first six hours. Maximum discharge, meter speed, 50,000. We're talking three times that for the dam, for Mobile Dam. Depths, by the six or five to nine meters, 12 to 15. So you're starting to build a case. You got a lot more people. Got a lot more flow, you got a lot more depth. It lost into the other thing, but just walking through that really easy what I showed you earlier and how to walk through it outside the lights. You can quickly build the case for people that don't understand lights and that said, okay, this makes sense that you have a lot more people, a lot higher depths, velocity, a lot higher flood severity. Okay, that might is going to be different here. And that's that's the uh, the easiest way to get there. But if we didn't have this to rely on, and we had to rely on Teton Dam failure, for example, that's going to be hard to extrapolate all the way out from eleven to three hundred eighty thousand. Understanding case histories and how to put those in context is really important. Okay, consequence question: How many of you in your uh, um, Agencies have a consequence specialist title. Okay. The core engineers has two. I don't know if anybody else out there that actually has a consequence specialist title, right? So, in terms of career path, it's not necessarily the most attractive, right? It's just not a lot of people saying, hey, I want to hire a consequence specialist and have you rule the world. Um, but that's okay. Right, and here's a, a, a quote um, that really what it comes down to is we're still building the practice. People are starting to identify that, hey, risk is everywhere now. Risk-informed decision-making is everywhere now. Those of you that know FERC's coming out with all those new requirements, the tailing van industries across the world are coming out with new requirements. Consequence specialists are going to be an integral part of that, right? So <laughs> just because it's not something you learn in college and there's a couple classes you've gone through here, right? You may feel like a beginner, but the opportunity out there for anybody who really wants to say, hey, this is cool stuff. I want to make an impact and I want to do it this way. I, you have the tools now with the classes you've taken, your understanding of life sim. You're well ahead of the curve on being able to become something more than just a, a beginner or somebody who can talk about consequences. You can become an expert if you decide you want to do so and dive into it. You can do so working with us if you're in the core. You can come hang out with us as a developmental. We can do all sorts of cool stuff. But outside the core, there's a lot of opportunities for people to really take it and run with it. So, I would encourage you just just because you don't see a career path right now that's easily laid out. Um, if you really dive into this, it's gonna it's gonna be there for you. People I know outside the core that really understand consequences. There's a, a few of them that really know everything about what's going on. Um, they are highly sought after 
they vary. And people are always trying to find more and more like that. So embrace it if that's what you choose to do. Because the impact you can have and, and the job satisfaction you can have is, um, as we can say, it's all there. So 